The Anderson family loved the outdoors. Mark and Sarah Anderson moved to the remote town of Willow Creek precisely for the endless expanse of pine forest that bordered their backyard. Their seven-year-old daughter, Emily, embodied that spirit more than anyone. A head of fiery red curls and a permanent smudge of dirt on her nose, she was their little woodland sprite. One crisp autumn afternoon, with the leaves crackling underfoot like nature's applause, Emily bounded into the trees. I'll be back before dark, she yelled over her shoulder, already half swallowed by the greenery. When dusk painted the sky in streaks of violet and orange, and Emily still hadn't returned, a shiver of worry ran down Sarah's spine. Mark, ever the steady one, reassured her. She probably lost track of time, honey. I'll find her. He plunged into the woods, his flashlight beam slicing through the shadows. The frantic pounding of his heart overlaid the usual symphony of rustling leaves and cricket songs. Emily, he called, his voice hoarse. Emily, sweetheart, where are you? With each unanswered call, dread curled thicker in his stomach. The forest, once so familiar, now felt alien and menacing. Then, a glimmer of white amidst the fallen leaves caught his eye. He raced forward, his breath hitching in his throat, and dropped to his knees. It was a doll. A porcelain doll, its dress tattered and stained. Yet the resemblance was chilling. The same bright blue eyes as Emily, the same shock of red hair. It lay nestled amidst a tangle of gnarled roots, like a child discarded. Mark scooped it up, desperation making his hands tremble. This was impossible. It couldn't be. And yet, his gut twisted with a terrible certainty. Burying his face in his hands, he let out a sob that echoed mournfully through the trees. Back at the house, Sarah waited, her nerves stretched taut as a bowstring. Every rustle, every snap of a branch made her jump. When Mark finally returned, his face was ashen, the light gone from his eyes. In his arms, he cradled the doll. Sarah let out a strangled gasp, collapsing against him. No, no, it can't be, she choked. The impossibility of it shattered her. The next few days were a blur of frantic searches, police questioning, and a gnawing, suffocating grief that settled upon the Anderson house like a shroud. Neighbors brought casseroles and murmured condolences with lowered eyes, but their words offered no comfort. Late one night, Sarah, unable to sleep, wandered to Emily's room. Moonlight painted silver streaks across the empty bed. Sarah picked up a fluffy stuffed rabbit, Emily's favorite, hot tears falling on its matted fur. A noise, the faintest creak of wood, made her whirl around. The doll was propped against Emily's pillow, its unblinking blue eyes staring at her. Sarah recoiled, her mind reeling. It had been in Mark's car, she was sure of it. How then? With trembling hands, she touched the doll's cold cheek. A ripple ran through her, a sense of something alive. Emily? She whispered, hope flaring impossibly bright in her chest. The doll's tiny porcelain mouth twitched. Then, with a voice that held the faint echo of her daughter, it rasped, Mama? A scream tore from Sarah's throat. She stumbled back, her heart thundering like a stampede. The doll sat unmoving on the bed, but now its eyes held a chilling gleam of awareness. Mark came running, roused by Sarah's cries. His face went slack with shock when he saw the doll. Sarah, he began. Sarah, I don't... Sarah clutched his arm, her voice shaking. It talked, Mark. It called me Mama. At first, Mark refused to believe her, his face tight with a mix of grief and confusion. But the doll sat there, an undeniable presence. They couldn't pretend it wasn't there any longer. Over the following days, a harrowing, disorienting reality set in. The doll was their Emily, her consciousness somehow trapped within the porcelain form. Her voice was weak, her vocabulary limited, her tiny body clumsy and fragile. 
They learned the doll could move slightly, its limbs stiff and jerky. Worst of all, Emily's memories of her time in the woods were fragmented, filled with dark, ominous hints that chilled them to the bone. They named her Dolly, an agonizing mix of familiar and alien. Sarah dressed her in Emily's old clothes, which hung loosely on the doll's tiny frame. Mark carried her around the house, her presence like a phantom weight on his soul. News crews descended on Willow Creek. The story of the girl turning into a doll became a macabre sensation. Experts and occultists swarmed in, offering conflicting theories and demanding to examine Dolly. Once private people, the Andersons were put into a spotlight they never asked for. Sarah watched the chaos swirling around them with numb detachment. Her only focus was her daughter, whatever was left of her. One night, the doll stirred as Sarah sat by Dolly's bedside in the dim light. Her eyes fixed on Sarah, and with a voice gaining strength, she said, They took me, Mama, in the woods. Sarah froze. They? Who, Emily? The shadows, Dolly whispered, her porcelain brow furrowing in concentration. They came from the old tree, the dark one. A sense of foreboding washed over Sarah. Emily had mentioned an old, twisted tree deep in the forest, one she refused to go near, saying it made her feel strange. We have to go back, she said aloud, the realization firming in her core. The next morning, armed with a fierce determination and marked by her side, Sarah ventured into the woods again. They followed the winding path, Sarah's eyes scanning the undergrowth for any sign, any clue to what might have happened. At last, they reached a clearing, and there it stood, an ancient oak, its trunk gnarled and blackened. A sense of wrongness emanated from it, a cold that seeped under Sarah's skin. Dolly, held tightly in Mark's arms, whimpered, They're here, Daddy. I can feel them. Taking a deep breath, Sarah approached the tree. As she drew closer, a faint, swirling darkness seemed to seep from its twisted branches, coalescing into wispy, shadowy shapes. They danced around her, their touch an icy shock on her skin. Emily, she cried. Emily, sweetheart, can you hear me? A chorus of whispers rippled through the air, sibilant echoes of her daughter's voice overlapping in a discordant symphony. Mama, help me. Despair threatened to overwhelm Sarah. Then, stealing herself, she reached out to the swirling shadows. A jolt coursed through her, a chilling mix of pain and exhilaration. Suddenly, the shadows began to swirl inward, converging on Dolly in Mark's arms. The doll glowed with an eerie, pulsating light. Mark cried out, almost dropping her as a force seemed to tear at the doll's small form. Sarah knew what she had to do. Focusing on all her love and desperation, she called out to the deepest part of her daughter trapped within. Emily, fight, come back to us. Dolly let out a piercing wail that shattered the oppressive silence of the woods. Blinding light exploded from her tiny body, forcing Sarah to shield her eyes. As the light subsided, Dolly lay limp in Mark's arms. Hesitantly, Mark lifted the doll's eyelid. Deep, familiar blue eyes stared back at them. They're Emily. A choked sob escaped Sarah's throat as tears streamed down her face. She fell to her knees and reached out to her daughter, lying perfectly still on the forest floor. There was a flicker of movement. Emily's fingers twitched. Her chest rose, and she drew a shuddering breath. She opened her eyes wider. Mama! Sarah scooped her up, cradling Emily's small body close. Sobs of relief and joy racked her. Mark joined them, wrapping them both in a fierce hug. They raced home, a desperate hope fueling their every step. Emily was weak, confused, and shivered uncontrollably the ordeal taking a toll on her small body. But she was alive. She was back. Back home, they tucked Emily into her bed. 
The familiar scent of lavender and worn blankets seemed to soothe her. Sarah stayed by her side, stroking her hair and murmuring reassurances. That night, as Emily drifted into a fitful sleep, Sarah finally turned to Mark. We need to leave, she said, her voice firm. We need to leave Willow Creek right away. Mark nodded grim acceptance in his eyes. They both knew this wasn't over. Whatever forces had toyed with their daughter might not be done. Over the next few days, they made hasty arrangements. They put their house on the market, packed their belongings with frantic efficiency, and said hurried goodbyes to the few friends they'd made. The lurking eyes of the press only hastened their resolve. They drove away from Willow Creek at dawn, the old oak a monstrous silhouette in the rearview mirror. They didn't know where they would go, but it didn't matter as long as they were together. In the weeks that followed, Emily slowly regained her strength. The shadows that haunted her memories retreated, leaving her with only wispy nightmares and a lingering fear of the dark. The Andersons found a small, quiet town on the coast, far from the reach of prying eyes and whispering woods. Time, though, couldn't erase what they'd endured. The doll, a constant reminder of the horrifying ordeal, remained hidden in the attic, swaddled in old blankets. Sarah watched her daughter cautiously for signs of change, for shadows lurking in Emily's bright eyes. Yet, life found a way to resume a semblance of normalcy. Emily made new friends, returned to school, and slowly shed the haunted look that had shadowed her. One sunny afternoon, Sarah found Emily digging furiously in a flower bed in the backyard. What are you up to, sweetheart? She asked with a smile. Emily held up a grubby hand, and in it was Dolly's porcelain face, chipped and cracked, but undeniably the same. Sarah's stomach lurched. Where... where did you find that? Emily shrugged, a carefree sparkle in her eyes. Just buried here. I want to plant her, Mama. Start a doll garden. For a moment, Sarah instinctively snatched the doll away, locking it up forever. But then she saw the unburdened light in Emily's eyes, the simple joy of a child playing in the dirt. Taking a deep breath, she forced a smile. A doll garden? That sounds lovely. Together, they planted the doll in the rich soil. Sarah didn't know what would grow from this strange seed, if anything, but perhaps what they needed was not to bury the past, but to learn to live with it, to let it take a twisted and beautiful new form, and to allow healing to bloom.